Hi everybody and welcome to this lesson on the RDS service or the relational database service offered by AWS. So what we're going to do in this lesson is I will create a database instance and link it to the RDS service in AWS. Now if you guys remember from the previous lesson there are multiple databases that are supported by the RDS service. You can see them listed here, such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, Oracle, or the MSSQL server. So what we're going to be doing is creating a database instance for MySQL in this demonstration. So I've already navigated to the RDS service through, our, through my management console. I'm going to go ahead and create the database to get started. Now just to keep in mind for RDS, it's a bit out of the scope of the cloud practitioners exam, but that information is required when you, if and when you are preparing for the solution architects exam. There are some prerequisites that you need to keep in mind before creating the database instance. For example, you should have the IAM users created with the default permissions that would be required to access the database instances given to them. So we would need to create IAM users and groups and make sure that the required permissions for them are there in order for them to access these database instances in RDS. Now by default, it, we have already created an administrator account that has admin privileges across all of the AWS services. So we're not going to go ahead and get into the details of creating additional users and groups. We're just going to use our administrator account or our root user for the purposes of this demonstration. Additionally, each database instance resides or will reside in a VPC or a virtual private cloud. Now the default VPC that is created by Amazon when an EC2 instance is created automatically allows access for database instances within it. But if you are creating a custom VPC, then you will need to create within the security groups access for the database instances. Just keep those in mind when you are going through this. And I'll cover the security groups in the VPC section so you can get familiarized with how you can create and configure them within VPC. But just keep in mind that the default VPC that Amazon creates automatically grants permissions for the RDS instances. We're going to create a database and I'm going to select the MySQL service. And it gives you a bit, a snippet of information regarding MySQL. It supports up to 32 terabytes of information, supports general purpose, memory optimized, and burstable performance instance classes, supports automatic backup and point in time recovery, and up to five read replicas per instance within a single region or cross region. Now here is where we can specify the instance details. First is the license model, which again, we're going to keep the general public license. If you have customized or specific licenses, they're more geared towards if you have MS SQL server, they would be required here. What version of MS SQL you would want to use? We're just going to stick with the version 5.6. And this is also since I've enabled it for a free tier usage, it has some limitations. It provides a single instance as well as up to 20 gigs of storage. For testing purposes and for training purposes, this is more than enough. In the additional settings, you have the DB instance identifier. Here we can type a name for the DB instance that's unique for the account in the region that we are working in. The master username, again, just like the name suggests, this will be the main account that you can use to log into the database instance. Now in advanced settings page, we can provide some additional information that RDS needs to launch the MySQL database instance. So first we can select which VPC we want to install this instance in. Again, I do not have any user defined VPCs created. We will create those in the VPC section, but this is the default one that is created by AWS. And same goes for the subnet public accessibility. If this database is going to be accessed by the public, you can click on yes or no. Now, just as a general practice rule, 
most databases should reside on a private subnet and not have public accessibility. When we get into VPCs, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail, but usually the databases reside on a public subnet and they work through a NAT or a network access table to get access or give access to people that are on the internet. Also, we can specify which availability zone we want this instance to be, or if you don't have a preference, then AWS will automatically pick an availability zone for, to launch this instance in. And also keep in mind that the default port for databases is 3306. Sometimes in some of the scenario questions in the exam, they do refer to this port by the number. And also keep in mind, since RDS is a fully managed relational database service offered by AWS, it provides an automatic backup for your database instances. And by default, the backup retention period is seven days. But you are able to increase that if you want AWS to retain the backups for longer periods of time. We can also specify if we want AWS to back up the database during certain times. So if there are non-peak non hours in your business environment, you can select a specific window when this database will be backed up so it does not affect any performance. We also have an option for enhanced monitoring. Again, it just gives you additional metrics so you can monitor the access into and out of your database. And here's where we can export specific logs, audit error, general and slow query logs to Amazon CloudWatch. Again, going again, like I mentioned, it is a fully managed service, so you can also allow AWS to automatically upgrade minor versions of the database instances when they come out. So any security patches can automatically be applied to the database instance always recommended to make sure this is enabled but if you have or if the organization has specific rules in terms of applying new patches then you would want to disable it and then manually apply those patches or those upgrades and it's very important this deletion protection make sure this is always enabled because it's very surprisingly it's very easy to delete database instances from rds and that's it. Now we click on the view of the database instance. It takes us back to the dash dashboard and this gives you the entire metrics of the Cosm SQL DB that we just created in RDS. So once we have this created, let's go ahead and see how we can delete this database instance. So up here in the actions, there's an option to either stop, reboot, or delete. And we can also create read replicas of this database along with taking a snapshot or restoring a snapshot or migrating a snapshot to a different availability zone or to a different region. So before we delete, if you guys remember when we were creating the database instance, we ensured that we check that box making sure that we are not easily able to delete this database. So let's see what happens when we actually click on delete. We basically have to go back, modify the database in order for us to be able to delete it. So if we click on modify, here we can change all of the configurations for the database. What we want to do is go ahead and find where we specified the deletion protection, uncheck this box, and then click on continue. And here we can either apply this change during the next scheduled maintenance window or we can apply it immediately. Let's go ahead and apply it immediately. And now we can go ahead and delete this instance. It'll ask us if we want to take a final snapshot of this database or retain any automatic backups. We do not want to do either one. Simply type in delete and here it will delete our database instance for us.